I just finished watching the September event and oh boy how excited I am, especially about the new iPhone 15 and 15 Plus. So today I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about them. This year's regular iPhones turned out to be just what we expected, the best deal for the book. The design is slightly different to everyone's surprise, the edges are now more rounded just like on the Pro iPhones. This means better grip and improved ergonomics and I am all up for that. This was an unexpected change but a welcomed one. The body is still made of aluminum, but the back glass is now frosted. Now the regular iPhones look even better. 15 and 15 Plus come in many gorgeous colors. There are five options to choose from, black, white, green, yellow, and pink. The colors appear to be slightly muted, but still look great. I think these new colors look really good and will be popular among buyers. The green color is by far my favorite, it looks super fresh and resembles the green of the iPhone 12, which is one of my favorite iPhone colors. Unlike the Pro models that got the new multifunction action button, these phones are staying with what people already know, and that's not a bad thing. For most users, the mute switch does its job well and there is no need for the extra feature that the action button offers on the Pro models. It's a classic feature that people are familiar with and it fits well with the straightforward nature of these regular iPhones. But there is one change that stands out, the USB-C port. Just like the rumors suggested, the regular iPhones have now adopted the USB-C port. Apple didn't specifically say so, but I suspect that the USB-C ports on these regular models might be a bit slower than those on the Pro versions. Still, the inclusion of USB-C is a big deal. It standardized the charging and data transfer across different devices, making life a bit easier. No more scrambling for different cables for different gadgets. One cable can do it all. 15 and 15 Plus get a big upgrade in the display department, now come with a bezel-less display, featuring the Dynamic Island, a feature that was exclusive to last year's iPhone 4. 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. This alone is a significant upgrade, bringing a more modern and sleek look to the regular iPhone lineup. But Apple didn't stop there. The brightness level on these new displays can go up to a whopping 2000 nits. This is the same level of brightness that was available on last year's Pro models. It's a hugely forward, especially when you consider that this level of brightness is usually reserved for more expensive models. This change is a game changer and wasn't something most of us saw coming. It's a pleasant surprise that adds a lot of value to these phones. So what does this mean for potential buyers? Well, it raises an important question. Is there any compelling reason to go for the older 14 Pro now? The new regular iPhones not only match the screen size and resolution of last year's Pro models, 6.1 inches for the iPhone 15 and 6.7 inches for the 15 Plus, but they also match the brightness. You are essentially getting a Pro level display without the Pro level price. The bezels on these regular iPhones aren't as slim as on the Pro models, but they are still pretty good. If you've used the iPhone 14 Pro, you'll know that even slightly thicker bezels aren't a deal breaker. So if you opt for one of these new regular iPhones, you will definitely feel like you're using a modern device. As for the Dynamic Island, its functionality is pretty much the same as in the Pro models. All the features you'd find on the more expensive iPhones are here too. Visually, it's a nice upgrade, making the phone look even more modern. However, based on my experience with 14 Pro, I'm still not entirely convinced that Dynamic Island is a must-have feature. It's a cool addition, but it's more of a gimmick than a game-changer. Now that this feature is available across all new iPhone models, it's up to you to decide if Dynamic Island is something you're excited about or if it's just an extra that you could take or leave. 15 and 15 Plus are bringing some serious camera upgrades to the table. They feature a 48 megapixel main camera, which looks like it's taken straight from last year's Pro models. But this sensor has a couple of special tricks, a 2 times zoom feature and the ability to shoot in 24 megapixels. The 2 times zoom was something you'd only find on the Pro models before, but now it's available on the regular iPhones too. This is a big deal because it's like getting the third camera function from just two sensors. It broadens the range of photography you can do, making the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus attractive options for 
a lot of people. Portraits has also seen an upgrade. This was a feature that was oddly missing in previous models and it's a welcome addition. Being able to control where the focus lies gives you more creative freedom and can make your portraits look even better. The 24 megapixel option is another big win. It gives you a lot of detail in your photos but keeps the file size small. It seems like Apple has found the sweet spot here, balancing quality and storage. As for the ultra wide camera, it's staying the same with a 12 megapixel resolution and the same aperture. But don't write it off just yet, the phone has new image processing algorithms, which could make a difference in photo quality. We'll have to test it out to know for sure, but it's looking promising. So between the 24 megapixel option, the two times zoom, and the potential improvements from new image processing, the 15 and the 15 plus are shaping up to have a really solid camera system. The new regular iPhones aren't just getting camera improvements, they're also getting a significant boost in processing power with the A16 Bionic chip. This is the same chip that's in the iPhone 14 Pro, so we already have a good idea of what it can do. You don't need to dive into Apple's performance charts to know that this chip is a powerhouse. Based on experience with iPhone 14 Pro, this chip holds up really well over time. Apps run smoothly, there are no noticeable slowdowns, and overall performance remains snappy even after a year of use. So you're looking at a phone that can handle pretty much anything you throw at it. With this chip, you're essentially getting pro-level performance in a more budget-friendly package. It's a win-win situation. Get a phone that's fast, efficient, and more than capable of handling everyday tasks as well as more demanding applications. The Wi-Fi in 15 and 15 Plus is sticking with version 6. It's not getting the Wi-Fi 6E update that the Pro models received, but there is some good news. The ultra-wide chip got an upgrade. It's now in its second generation, which means more accurate readings, this could be useful for things like air tags or any feature that needs precise location data. Now let's talk about battery. Unfortunately, there is no improvement here. Both the iPhone 15 and 15 Plus keep the same battery life as before, up to 20 hours for the 15 and up to 26 hours for the 15 Plus. The rumors about better battery life didn't pan out. Price-wise, 15 and 15 Plus are holding steady with no increase in cost. This is in contrast to the Pro models, which have seen a small price bump. iPhone 15 Pro stated $1,000 and the 15 Pro Max got a hundred bucks price increase. So if you're budget conscious, the regular iPhones offer a lot of bang for your book. Taking all these changes into account, the 15 and 15 Plus seem like the best deal for most people. They come with large modern displays and dynamic island, which many will see as a plus. They maintain the familiar design that many people are comfortable with, add in the new Type-C port and the powerful A16 Bionic chip, and you've got a compelling package all without a price increase. So if you are in the market for a new iPhone this year, the 15 and 15 Plus are worth serious consideration. They offer many of the features people want without the higher price tag of the Pro models. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.